Welcome to Keys to the Kingdom. I'm Marissa and I uh, just wanted to come on here today quickly because I was um, I was reading in the book of Enoch the other day and I was reading a few chapters that I that really stood out to me and I just wanted to share them wanted to study them with you and um, I thought it was pretty interesting so I wanted to share it. I know some of you don't acknowledge the book of Enoch and that's fine. Um, if you do read the book of Enoch and you do do consider that it was at one time a part of the canon, um, then you will probably enjoy this. And maybe you've already read it. Maybe you've already read these chapters, but um, I thought it was interesting. So I wanted to, um, it's just five chapters out of the book of Enoch. Um, the book of Enoch is actually um, pretty big. It has... Um, there's 108 chapters in the book of Enoch. And we're just going to be reading through 85, um, chapters 85 through 90, because this was the section that I, um, I just thought was pretty interesting. It jumped out at me. And um, let me know if, you, if you've read this before, or if you've heard this before. Um, and as we're reading along, kind of let me know what you think of what we're reading and what what comes to your mind when we're reading these, these chapters? This um, chapter 85 starts out with a dream that Enoch has. And he's telling his son Methuselah this dream that he had. So, um, never, uh, Sonny said never read. Never read. Well, um, actually the book of Enoch used to be in our, um, in our canon. It was at one time. Um, there was a lot of books that were removed and a lot of people have different varying uh, opinions on whether those books should have been removed or not. But um, we have gone from time to time back over some of those books and, you know, sort of just studied them for ourselves to see um, what, well, in fact, I think, um, I think there's still part of some canons around the world. They're definitely still part of the Ethiopian canon, uh, one of the oldest manuscripts that were found, uh, or that we have, is the Ethiopian canon, and it contains the Book of Enoch. Um, yes, it is a shame. <laughs> yeah, it is a shame uh, if those books are are worthy of being read, and they, you know, they're not. None of the books that were re were removed necessarily teach anything different. It's not like they you know, take you away from God or, or, or truth. So, um, it's probably because there are some controversial topics maybe that they don't want to address. Um, kind of like why pastors don't talk about, uh, Genesis six too much and the Nephilim and the fallen angels and angels mating with humans. Um, some will tell you that they prefer to stick to, the line of thinking that it was the sons of Seth mating with the daughters of Cain. Um, but I don't see that creating ginormous giants that ended up, you know, ravaging the earth to the point that God had to bring a flood. Thankful to understand more of the books taken out. Yeah. Is it sunny? I hope it's sunny. Is it, or is it Sunni? Um, Yes, Sonny, it is, uh, it, there, well, I mean, they were there. They were there at one point, so somebody thought they were important. Just got done reading this the other day. Did you really? Wow, so the whole book of Enoch, Deborah? Were you reading the whole book of Enoch? That's, um, that's good. Now, there are, um, this is the one I'm going to, well, I'm actually going to bring it up online so that we can follow along, but um, I'm actually reading this one here. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, yeah, maybe you can see it now. Um, my green screen makes everything look weird. But um, this one contains the book of Enoch, the second book of Enoch and the third book of Enoch. And it's really only the first book of Enoch that is worthy of study only because the other two were written much later and they're considered more of a story. Um, and those aren't the ones that were actually in the canon 
when Enoch was still in the canon. So it's the Ethiopic book of Enoch, which is the first book of Enoch. That's, that's the only one I read. I don't read the other ones. I'm just now on chapter 91. Oh my goodness. So this is going to be like a little bit of a refresher for you because we're going to be reading through. That's so funny, Deborah. Crystal made it. Oh, so glad you could make it, sweetie. How do I find this book or any of the others? Um, uh, well, th the, this particular book of Enoch, just this, this translation, this is Joseph Lumpkin. You can get this anywhere. You can get this on Amazon, online, anywhere. Um, but if you, if you look up online, you just type in, you know, a list of the, sometimes it's called the Apocrypha. Um, and there was also books that were included in the Septuagint, which is, which was the Greek, the older translation of the old, older Testament. Um, <clears throat> but we're just going to read through chapters uh, 85 and 90 today. That's so funny, Deborah, that you just got done reading these chapters. That's very interesting. Um, I like to hear that. Yeah, I hadn't, I wasn't, I hadn't been reading it for a while. And then I picked it back up where I left off. I've read it before, but um, I kind of have to do it in, in, in sections like anything else, but, um, I just picked it back up the other day and I was like, this is interesting that he had this dream. Um, and could it have been foretelling obviously of the future? Because, uh, it's almost like, it's almost like God was giving Enoch his entire plan in one dream. And God can do that. He can show you everything in one dream. Um, so let's um, let's go ahead and get started in chapter 85. Um, and we're going to read these five chapters. Let me see here. Uh, 90. Okay. So I'm actually going to pull up the scriptures... The Apocrypha, the Researcher's Library of Ancient Texts. There you go. Thank you, Deborah. Um, so I'm going to bring it up for you to see it on the screen so you can read along if you don't have the Book of Enoch. Um, let me go ahead and pull this up. Um... Let me make sure this is the right chapter. Actually, hold on one second for me. So in my book, it's chapter 85, but online it's chapter 84. So I don't want to confuse you, but um, for some reason in my book, it says chapter 85 and then online it says 84, but should be either one of those chapters. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. After this, I saw another dream and explained it to you, my son. Enoch arose and said to his son Methuselah, To thee, my son, will I speak. Hear my word and incline thy ear to the visionary dream of your father. Before I married your mother Edna, I saw a vision on my bed. And behold, a cow sprung forth from the earth. And this cow was white. Afterwards, a female heifer sprung forth, and with it another heifer. One of them was black, and one of them was red. The black heifer then struck the red one and pursued it over the earth. From that period, I could see nothing more of the red heifer. But the black one increased in bulk, and a female heifer came with him. After this, I saw many cows proceeded forth, resembling him and following after him. The first female young one also went out in the presence of the first cow and sought the red heifer, but, not, but found him not. And she lamented with a great lamentation while she was seeking him. 
Then I looked unto the first cow who came to her, from which time she became silent and ceased to lament. Afterwards she calved another white cow, and again calved many cows and black heifers. In my sleep I also perceived a white bull. Actually, let me back up to chap. Okay. She lamented with a great lamentation. Um, see, for some reason in the book that I have, it's the chapters are different than it is online. Um, red heifer. Stand by, and they begin to father many white bulls. Then I looked until the first cow came to her, from which she became silent and ceased to lament. After she calved another white cow, and again calved many cows and he black heifers. In my sleep I also perceived a white bull which in like manner grew and became large, a large white bull. After him, many white cows came forth resembling him, and they began to calve many other white cows, which resembled them and followed each other. Okay, so basically, uh, what, what this is sounding like is the story of Adam, Eve, Cain, and Abel. So the first white bull mentioned is Adam. And the heifer is Eve. And the two boar, bulls born to them are the black one, which was Cain, and the red one, which is Abel. And then Eve leaves to seek Abel and finds him. She laments his death, and Adam comforts her. Cain goes on to produce many oxen, and Eve produces another son, and thus produces many more bulls and cows. And of course, that other son would have been Seth. So it sounds like God is giving Enoch a dream of the story of mankind. Okay, let's go on to the next chapter. And I looked attentively while I was sleeping and surveyed heaven above and behold, a single star fell from heaven. Where have we heard that before, where a star falls from heaven? Which, being raised up, ate and fed many, fed among those cows. After that, I perceived another large and black cow, other large and black cows. And behold, all of them changed their stalls and pastures, while their young began to lament one with another. And again, I looked in my vision and surveyed heaven, when behold, I saw many stars which descended and projected themselves from heaven to where the first star was. So we have a star falling and then we have many stars descending with the star that fell. What does that sound like to you? Um, it sounds obviously like the star that had fallen was Satan and then the other stars fell and these are and when you read the book of Enoch, um, well, when you read the Bible, it, it, it will say B'nai Ha Elohim in Hebrew. It says B'nai Ha, yes, Sherry, fallen angels. The Hebrew is B'nai Ha Elohim, and it's translated in your Bibles as the sons of God or the fallen, or the angels, fallen angels. And when you're reading the book of Enoch, they're called the watchers. It uses the word watchers. And so it sounds like it's saying that um, the other stars fell, and these are the watchers, and they caused the heifers, who are the women, to begin living and basically having um, intercourse with angels. And we know that from Genesis 6, that the sons of God came into the daughters of man and bore children to them. And based on the previous verses, it would appear that Satan and the fallen angels picked the descendants of Cain, 
with whom to mate with. So they were mating with the daughters of Cain. Okay. Yep, Crystal says fallen angels. You got it. <clears throat> and it says, into the midst of these young ones, while the cows were with them, feeding in the midst of them, I looked at I looked at and observed them when behold they all acted after the manner of horses and began to approach the young cows all of whom became pregnant and brought forth elephants camels and asses so okay you have to understand here that God is saying that they were they were cows okay and then uh in the midst of the young ones, while the cows were feeding them, feeding in the midst of them, I looked and observed them, and behold, they acted after the manner of horses and began to approach the young cows. And they, have, and they get pregnant, and then they're having elephants, camels, and asses. And we know from the book of Genesis that God created everything to produce after its kind. So... Cows produce cows, horses produce horses, elephants produce elephants, camels produce camels, so on and so forth. But this is saying that these cows were pregnant and producing elephants, camels, and asses. Basically, they were producing things not after their kind. Okay? And then it says, And at these all the cows were alarmed and terrified when they began biting with their teeth swallowing and striking with their horns so now these new creatures are biting swallowing and striking with their horns and they begin to also devour the cows and behold all the children of the earth trembled shook with terror at them and suddenly fled away um I want to make a note here that in the book of Jubilees, and we have read, uh, we did a study going through most of the book of Jubilees. I think we still have half of it to go through from last year. But in the book of Jubilees, it indicates that the offspring of the angels and women were somehow different. And they were divided into categories of the Nephilim, which were the giants, and the Eljo. Now, uh, the word nafal means the fallen, and for some reason there's no indication as to the meaning of the word elio in the book of Jubilees, but the word would indicate that these are godlings, so they're half man, half quote-unquote god, and they're likely referred to, and those are likely referred to in the book of Genesis as the men of renown. So, of course, we know that when they mated with angels, mated human and angels together, and they created the Nephilim, they were giants, they were men of renown. These are what were considered the, um, you know, the Greek gods, the gods of Egypt, the gods of Babylon. These are the, these are the gods that all the pagan nations worshipped. Deborah, Nimrod, you got it, bingo. Bingo, Deborah got it. Nimrod, he was definitely becoming a mighty man. Okay, next chapter. And I perceived them when they began to strike and to swallow each other, and the earth cried out. Then I raised my eyes a second time towards heaven and saw in a vision that, behold, there came forth from heaven, as it were, the likeness of a white man. One came forth from thence, and three with him. Those three, who came forth last, seized me by my hand, and raising me up from the generations of the earth, elevated me to a high station." Then they showed me a lofty tower on the earth, while every hill became diminished. And they said, Remain here until thou perceive what shall come to those elephants, camels, and asses upon the stars and upon all the cows. So you see here, Enoch is being taken away by angels. Okay. 
He's being taken to heaven. And um and he's and he's well he's saying these heavenly beings who were like white men. And they took his hand and they showed him a tower that was raised high above the earth. So they're showing him uh so yeah, Deborah was we were almost there. Deborah said Nimrod. Nimrod is the one that was the forager of the Tower of Babel. He's the one that it was his idea to come up with the Tower of Babel. And these angels are showing Enoch this tower and how all the other hills were lowered. So basically, these beings had ravished the earth and now they're deciding to build a tower to heaven. And it says, wait here, because he's going to show him what's going to come upon the elephants, the camels, the asses, of the stars. Now, the stars are the fallen angels. The elephants, the camels, and the asses are the Nephilim. So that's the mixture. That's the hybrids. So you have the fallen angels, which are the stars, the fallen angels. They create the Nephilim, which is the hybrid, human angel hybrid, which that's considered the elephants, camels, and asses. And all the cows are the rest of the people, um, probably just the children of Seth. Yep, Crystal got it. Tower of Babel. Okay, let's see. So that's 86. 87. Okay. Then I looked at the one of the one of the four white men who came forth first. And he seized the first star, which fell down from heaven, and binding it hand and foot, he cast it into a valley, a valley narrow, deep, and su stupendous and gloomy. And we know that um, the fallen angels they were bound for a, for a period of time. Um, they were bound for a period of time. Um, and this is just confirming that. Now, it wasn't the Nephilim that were bound because they were supposedly destroyed, but the fallen angels were bound and cast into a valley. That's what it says here. Then one of them drew his sword and gave it to the elephants, camels, and asses who began to strike each other. And the whole earth shook on account of them. And when I looked in the vision, behold, one of those four angels who came forth, hurled from heaven, collected together and took all the great stars, whose form partly resembled that of horses, and binding them all hand and foot, cast them into the cavities of the earth. So do you understand what that's saying? That's saying, again, that he took all the great stars that resembled horses. Because remember, they, um, remember they, uh, they started acting like horses and that has to do with mating, basically. Um, that's a, uh, that, that is a term to paint a picture of them as, as mating. And, um, that would have been the fallen angels. And then binding them all hand and foot and casting them into the cavities of the earth. And remember when we read in the book of Revelation that a star is going to fall down and open up the bottomless pit. And all these things are going to come out of the bottomless pit. And we hear that in the, uh, in the book of Revelation. Okay, so I don't know why these are so short, but 88... Then one of those four went to the white cows. So the white cows are considered the sons of Seth, like the good, the good people. Then one of the four angels went to the white cows and taught them a mystery. While the cow was trembling, it was born and became a man and fabricated for himself a large ship. In this he dwelt and three cows dwelt with him in that ship which covered them. 
Okay, so this is pretty obvious. Uh, who is this white cow that builds a large ship? I also want to, uh, that last chapter that I read having to do with throwing them into the deep abyss and the, uh, um, binding the, the angels in second Peter two, four, it says for God spared, not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. Deborah said, Noah, Cheryl said, no Sherry said, Noah, yes. So, um, now he's seeing Noah coming onto the scene, building a ship. And I lifted my eyes towards heaven and saw a lofty roof. Above it were seven cataracts, which poured forth on a certain village much water. And again, I looked and behold, there were fountains opening in the earth in that large village. Then water began to boil up and rose over the earth so that the village was not seen while the whole soil was covered with water. Much water was over it, darkness and clouds. Then I surveyed the height of the, of this water and it was elevated above the village. Um... Stand by. I think I'm, I wanted to cover one thing here. Okay. So the water is up over the village. It flowed over the village and stood higher than the earth. Then all the cows which were collected there while I looked on them were drowned, swallowed up and destroyed in the water. But the ship floated above it. All the cows, the elephants, the camels, the asses were drowned in the earth and all the cattle. Nor could I perceive them. Neither were they able to get out, but perished and sunk into the deep. So when it says the cows, the elephants, the camels, and the asses were drowned in the earth, it's saying all of the people had who had basically turned away from God. And then all of the hybrids, which were the Nephilim, were all drowned together. Again, I looked in the vision until those cataracts from the lofty roof were removed and the fountains of the earth became equalized while other depths were opened into which the water began to descend until the dry ground appeared. The ship remained on the earth and darkness receded and it became light. Then the white cow, which became a man, went out of the ship and the three cows with him. One of the three cows was white, resembling that cow. One of them was red as blood and one of them was black. And then the white cow left them. So right here it's saying... One of Noah's sons was white, resembling that cow. Apparently like Noah. One of them was red as blood, and one of them was black, and the white cow left them. It sounds like Noah left them. So here we have the story of Noah and the flood, and the flood came because of the sins of the watchers and their offspring who began killing everything. The flood cleansed the earth and left only the sons of Noah and their wives to repopulate. The story seems to indicate that the various races of the world, white, red, and black, began with the sons of Noah. And they began to, um, well, let's see here. They be then began wild beasts and birds to bring forth. All of these, the different kinds, assembled together lions, tigers, wolves, dogs, wild boars, foxes, rabbits, and hanzar. The Sinet, the Avest, Kites, Foncas, and Ravens. Then a white cow was born in the midst of them. They begin to bite each other, 
When the white cow, which was born in the midst of them, brought forth a wild ass and a white cow at the same time, and after that many wild asses, then the white cow, which was born, brought forth a wild, a black wild sow and a white sheep. Okay, so check this out. Um, this, um... It says, they begin to bite one another, but the white bull, which was among them, fathered a wild ass and a white bull with it. This could be Abraham giving birth to Ishmael and Isaac. Ishmael would have been the wild ass, because it even says that in Genesis, and Isaac would have been the white bull. Isaac fathered a boar, so this is saying... Um, Then the white cow which was born brought forth a black wild sow and a, sh and a white sheep. Um, the black wild sow, or in my translation it says a boar, would have been Esau, because Isaac's sons were Esau and Jacob, and the sheep would have been Jacob. Because then it says here, the wild sow brought forth many swine. So basically, unclean animals is what um, Esau was bringing forth. And the sheep brought forth 12 sheep. So that's how we know that this is Jacob, because he had 12 sons. When those 12 sheep grew up, they delivered one of them to the asses. Now we know that that's Joseph being delivered to Egypt. Um, he was sold to the Midianites or Ishmaelites as a slave. And then in turn, they sold him to the Egyptians. So he was delivered to the asses. So actually the asses would have been, um, the Midianites or Ishmaelites. Delivered them to the asses. Again, those asses delivered that sheep to the wolves and the wolves would have been Egyptians. I'm sorry. <clears throat> and then he grew up in the midst of them. So this is clearly about Joseph being in Egypt. Then the Lord brought the 11 other sheep that they might dwell and feed with him in the midst of the wolves. That's when the other sons came into Egypt because they needed food. There was a famine and they ate with the wolves, which were, were the Egyptians. They multiplied and there was abundance of pasture for them. But the wolves began to frighten and oppress them while they destroyed their young ones. And they left their young in torrents of deep water. So this would have been when the, um, the new Pharaoh came about and started uh, and decided to kill the firstborn of all the Hebrew babies. Now the sheep began to cry out on account of their young, which would have been the Israelites, and fled for refuge to their Lord. One, however, who was saved, that would have been Moses, escaped and went away to the wild asses. Um, yes, so this is going to be again the story of Moses. Let me see. Okay, so with all their might, with all their might, until the Lord of the sheep descended at their voice from his lofty habitation, went to them and inspected them. He called to that sheep, which had secretly stolen away from the wolves, and told him to make the wolves understand that they were not to touch the sheep. So this is obviously when Moses goes back to Egypt. And says, let my people go. Thank you for doing this. It makes so much sense. I'm so glad you already read it. I just think it's interesting that uh, God gave him a dream of literally the entire history of mankind. So. 
so both of uh, then that sheep went to the wolves with the word of the Lord. That's Moses. When another met him and proceeded with him. So that would have been Aaron. Both of them together entered the dwelling of the wolves, the Egyptians, and conversing with them made them understand from that from thenceforth there were they were not to touch the sheep or the or the Hebrews. Afterwards, I perceived the wolves greatly prevailing over the sheep with their whole force. The sheep cried out and their Lord came to them. He began to strike the wolves who commenced a grievous lamentation, but the sheep were silent, nor from that time did they cry out. So this is God delivering the people of Israel from Egypt. Um, then I looked at them until they departed from the wolves. The eyes of the wolves were blind who went out and followed them with all their might. But the Lord of the sheep proceeded with them and conducted them. All his sheep followed him. Hold on. I want to make sure I'm in the right spot. Okay. Followed him. And his countenance was terrific and splendid and glorious was his aspect. Yet the wolves began to follow the sheep until they overtook them. In a certain lake of water. So now we're getting to the, the dividing of the Red Sea. Then that lake became divided and the water standing up on both sides before their face. While their Lord was conducting them, he placed himself between them and the wolves. The wolves, however, perceived not the sheep, but went into the midst of the lake, following them and running after them into the lake of water. So this is the Egyptians following them into the sea. But when they saw the Lord of the sheep, they, re they turned to fly before his face. Then the water of the lake returned and that suddenly, according to its nature, it became full and was raised up until it covered the wolves. And I saw that all of them which had followed the sheep perished and were drowned. So, so far, this is pretty much lining up with the entire history of, of God's people. Okay, so, but the sheep passed over the water, proceeding to a wilderness, which was without both water and grass, and they began to open their eaves and to, I, I suppose to say eyes, and to see. Then I beheld the Lord of the sheep inspecting them and giving them water and grass. The sheep already mentioned was proceeding with them and conducting them. So that's Moses. Afterwards, I perceived their Lord standing before them with an aspect terrific and severe. And when they all beheld him, they were frightened at his countenance. All of them were alarmed and trembled. They cried out after the sheep and to the other sheep who had been with him and who was in the midst of them saying, we are not able to stand before our Lord or to look upon him. Then that sheep who conducted them went away and ascended to the top of the rock. So this is when Moses goes to the top of Mount Sinai. When the rest of the sheep began to grow blind and to wander from the path, which he had shown them, but he knew it not. Their Lord, however, was moved with great indignation against them. And when that sheep had learned what had happened, he descended from the top of the rock and coming down to them found that there were many which had become blind and wandered from his path as soon as they beheld him, they feared and trembled at his presence. So this is obviously when they built the golden calf.
Crystal said, oh, um, Baal, worshiping Baal. <clears throat> and became desirous of returning to their fold. Then that sheep... taking with him other sheep, went to those which had wandered, and afterward began to kill them. They were terrified at his countenance. Then he caused those which had wandered to return, who went back to their fold. I likewise saw there in the vision that this sheep became a man, built a house for the Lord of the sheep, and made them all stand in that house. So now they're talking about him building the tabernacle. How Moses built the tabernacle. Okay, let's see here. Um, I perceived also that the sheep which proceeded to meet this sheep, their conductor died. I saw too that all the great sheep perished while smaller ones rose up in their place, entering into a pasture and approached a river of water. So now we're fast forwarding to what seems to be the Jordan when they're crossing over into the land. And it talks about how a generation died and a new generation was entering in. All the sheep sought after him and cried for him with bitter lamentation. I think this is when Moses dies. I saw likewise that they ceased to cry after that sheep and passed over the river of water. And there arose other sheep, all of whom conducted them instead of those who were dead and who had previously conducted them. Then I saw the sheep entered into a goodly place in a territory delectable and glorious. So now we're going into the promised land. I saw also that they became satiated that their house was in the midst of a delectable territory and that sometimes their eyes were opened and that sometimes they were blind until another sheep arose and conducted them. He brought them all back and their eyes were opened. Um, so after Moses died and the two spies were sent into the promised land to bring back a report, Joshua took over and led the Israelites into the promised land. Okay. Now they're in the land and it says the dogs, foxes, wild boars began to devour them until again another sheep another sheep um, until the Lord raised up another sheep, the master of the flock, one of themselves, a ram to conduct them. This ram began to butt on every side, those dogs, foxes, wild boars, until they all perished. I think this is talking about David. Yes. This is leading up to David. Because David is the one that fought all of the surrounding nations. Because there was still Nephilim. Because there were still giants. Somehow giants had come back and um, they were in the land of Canaan. But the former sheep opened his eyes and saw the ram in the midst of them who had laid aside his glory. And he began to strike the sheep, treading upon them and behaving himself without dignity. Then their Lord sent the former sheep again to a still different sheep and raised him up to be a ram and to conduct them instead of that sheep who had laid aside his glory. Going therefore to him, conversing with him alone, he raised up that ram and made him a prince and leader of the flock. And all the time that the dogs troubled the sheep, <clears throat> the first ram paid respect to the latter ram. Um, I'm sorry, the first ram has to be King Saul. And then he raises up David. 
Then the latter ram arose and fled away from before his face, and I saw these dogs caused the first ram to fall. Yeah, Saul and David. Deborah got it. Deborah got it. <clears throat> then the latter ram arose and conducted the smaller sheep. That ram likewise begat many sheep and died. So that's David. Then there was a smaller sheep, a ram, instead of him, which became a prince and leader conducting the flock. And the sheep increased in size and multiplied. So this must be Solomon. And all the dogs and foxes and wild boars feared and fled away from him. That ram also struck and killed all the wild beasts, so that they could not again prevail in the midst of the sheep, nor at any time ever snatch them away. And that house was made large and wide, a lofty tower being built upon it by the sheep. For the Lord of the sheep. So this is Solomon building the first temple. The house was low, but the tower was elevated and very high. Then the Lord of the sheep stood over the tower and caused a full table to approach before him. And again, I saw those sheep wandered and went various ways forsaking their house. And their Lord called to some among them whom he sent to them. But these the sheep began to kill, and when one of them was saved from slaughter, he leaped and cried out against those who were desirous of killing him. But the Lord of the sheep delivered him from their hands and made him ascend to him and, re and remain with him. So this, I think, actually skips to um, um, so the people fors forsook the house and then that their Lord called some among them whom he sent and I think this is because it says but the Lord of the sheep delivered him from their hands and made him ascend to him and remain with him I think that's talking about Elijah yeah I think this is talking about Elijah because obviously Elijah um, is the only other one who ascended without dying. He also sent many others to them to testify with lamentations to exclaim against them. And I saw when some of them forsook the house of their Lord and his tower, wandering on all sides and growing blind. And I saw the Lord of the sheep made a great slaughter among them in their pasture until they cried out to him in the consequence of that, sl consequence of that slaughter. Then he departed from the place of his habitation and left them in the power of the lions, tigers. So basically this is when God allows Israel to um, be taken over by their enemies. Left them in the power of the lions, tigers, wolves, foxes, every beast. And the wild beasts began to tear them. I saw too that he forsook the house of their fathers and their tower, giving them all the power of the lions to tear and devour them into the power of every beast. Then I began to cry out with all my might, imploring the Lord of the sheep and showing him how the sheep were devoured by all the beasts of prey. But he looked on in silence, rejoicing that they were devoured, swallowed up and carried off and leaving them in the power of the beasts for food. He called also 70 shepherds and resigned them to, to them the care of the sheep that they might overlook them. Let me see here. I think it's interesting that he men mentioned 70 shepherds. Um, that's an interesting number because the Septuagint was supposedly called the Septuagint because there were 70 different rabbis who were chosen to complete, like, separately write the entire um, Tanakh, which would have been the Old Testament at that time. Um, 
So I'm trying to think during during this time what this 70, what who this 70 would have been. If you know who it is or it comes to your mind, let me know. Saying to them that they're, a tr they're associates, every one of you henceforth overlook the sheep and whosoever I command you do and I will deliver them to you numbered. I will tell you which of them shall be slain, these destroy, and he delivered the sheep to them. Then he called to another and said, Understand and watch everything which these shepherds shall do to these sheep, for many more of them shall perish that I have commanded. Of, of every excess and slaughter which the shepherds shall commit, there shall be an account as how many may have perished by my command and how many they may have destroyed by their own heads. Of all the destruction brought about by each of the shepherds, there shall be an account. And according to the number I will cause to recital to be made before me how many they have destroyed of their own heads and how many they have delivered upon up to destruction that I may have the testimony against them and that I may know all their proceedings and that delivering the sheep to them I may see what they will do whether they will act as I have commanded them or not so let me see here So he wants to see, are they going to follow my commands or not? After he's completely destroyed the nation, this is probably the destruction of the first temple, I'm assuming, and them going into exile. Okay. And I observed during the time that thus 37 shepherds were overlooking, all of whom finished in their respective periods as first. Others then received them into their hands that they might overlook them in their respective periods, every shepherd in his own period. Afterwards, I saw in the vision that all the birds of heaven arrived, eagles, vests, kites, ravens. The eagle instructed them all. They began to devour the sheep, to pick out their eyes, and to eat up their bodies. The sheep then cried out, for their bodies were devoured by the birds. I also cried out and groaned in my sleep against the shepherd, which overlooked the flock. And I looked while the sheep... This is probably when they had kings that were um, unrighteous kings in Israel. And then I looked while the sheep were eaten up by the dogs, by the eagles, by the kites. They neither left them their body nor their skin nor their muscles until the bones alone remained until their bones fell upon the ground and the sheep became diminished I observed likewise during this time that 23 shepherds were overlooking who completed their respective period of 58 periods. Then were small lambs born of these white sheep who began to open their eyes and to see, crying out to the sheep. The sheep, however, cried not out to them. Neither did they hear what they uttered to them, but were deaf, blind, and obdurate in the greatest degrees. I saw in the vision that the ravens flew down upon those lambs. They seized one of them, and tearing the sheep into pieces, they devoured them. I saw also the horns grew up upon those lambs, and the ravens lighted down upon their horns. Hold on one second. I just want to make sure I don't go too quickly here.
Hmm. This doesn't this doesn't read like mine reads. This is 89. What was 88? That was 88. Hold on guys, I just want to make sure cuz I have a book that I'm that I have in my lap and I feel like this one's not reading exactly the same. I feel like I, I missed this part. Yeah, I think we missed this part. Hold on one second. Then I began to weep and was greatly on account of the sheep. In like manner I saw the vision, him who wrote, how he wrote down one, destroyed the shepherds. He ascended, remained, and exhibited each of his books to the Lord of sheep containing all that which had which they had done and all which each of them had made away with and all which they had delivered up to destruction he took the book upon his hands and read it sealed it and deposited it okay so this is the temple being destroyed and I think this has to do with Ezra now. Coming back to Jerusalem. To rebuild the city. Because they, they come and they find, if you remember the story of Ezra, they come and they find the Torah, which they hadn't been following. And they all open up the Torah and they start reading it and they start crying aloud because they hadn't been following it. After this, I saw the shepherds overlooking for 12 hours and behold, three of the sheep departed, arrived, went in and began building all which was fallen down of that house. So this is the rebuilding of the temple. So this is the second temple. But the wild boars hindered them because you remember the story of Ezra and Nehemiah. Everybody who was still left in the land was fighting them because they were trying to rebuild the temple. Again, they began to build as before and raised up that tower, which they called a lofty tower. And again, they began to place before the tower a table, which every impure and unclean kind of breed upon it. So this looks like they're rebuilding the, the temple only to once again defile it. Moreover, all the sheep were blind and could not see, as were the shepherds likewise. Thus, they were delivered up to the shepherds for a great destruction, who trod them underfoot and devoured them. Yet was their Lord silent until all the sheep in the field were destroyed and the shepherds and the sheep were all mixed together, but they did not save them from the power of the beasts. Then he who wrote the book ascended, exhibited it, and read it at the res residence of the Lord of the sheep. He petition petitioned him for them and prayed and pointed out every act of the shepherds and testifying before him against them. Then taking the book, he deposited it with him and departed. This could have been the other prophets, Ezra, Haggai, and Zechariah, who returned and wrote books of the Old Testament. Yeah, see, and that's, that says it's chapter 88. Okay, so, so we're going to 89, but in my book, it's actually chapter 90. So 89. Okay, so we have two more chapters. I observed during this time that 37 shepherds were overlooking, all of whom finished in their respective period as first. Others then received them into their hands that they might overlook them in their respective periods, every shepherd in his own period. Afterwards, I saw in this vision that all the birds of heaven arrived, eagles, kites, ravens, the eagle instructed them. 
and they began to devour the sheep to pick. Okay, so um, I believe the eagle is Rome. I think this is when, so you have the Greeks coming in, the Greeks and the Romans coming to devour Israel. They began to devour the sheep and pick out their eyes and to eat up their bodies. And the sheep then cried out for their bodies were devoured by the birds. I also cried out and groaned in my, sh in my sleep against the shepherd which overlooked the flock. And I looked while the sheep were eaten up by the dogs, by the eagles, by the kites. They neither left them their body nor skin nor their muscles until their bones alone remained. Until their bones fell upon the ground and the sheep became diminished. And I observed during this time that 23 shepherds were overlooking who completed in their respectful periods, 58 periods. Then were small lambs born of those white sheep who began to open their eyes and cried out. Um, the sheep, however, cried not out to them, neither did they hear what they uttered to them, but were deaf, blind, and obdurate in their great in the greatest degrees i saw in the vision that ravens flew down upon those lambs that they seized one of them and that tearing the sheep in pieces they devoured them i saw also that horns grew up on those lambs and that the ravens lighted down upon their horns this could be the story of the Maccabees. Um, so this is where we get the story of Hanukkah. I believe this is talking about that th that time uh, where you have Judas Maccabeus um, rebelling against the rebelling against the uh, the Greeks. And I saw too that large horns sprouted out on an animal. And I among the sheep that their eyes were opened and he looked at them. Their eyes were wide open and he cried out to them. Then the devil saw him, all of who ran to him. And besides this, all the eagles, the aves, the ravens and the kites were still carrying off the sheep, flying down upon them and devouring them. The sheep were silent, but the devil lamented and cried out. Then the ravens contended and struggled with them. They wished... They wished among them to break his horn, but they prevailed not over him. Again, I think this is talking about uh, Judah Maccabee. Um, I looked on them until the shepherds, the eagles, the aves, the kites came, who cried out to the ravens to break the horns of the Dabala and contended with him to kill him. But he struggled with them and cried out, that help might come to him. Then I perceived that the man who had written down the names of the shepherds and who ascended up before the Lord of the sheep. He brought assistance and caused everyone to see him descending to the help of the Dabala. This says Dabala. Mine actually says Ram. It, mine says, And I saw the man who wrote down the names of the shepherds and brought them up before the Lord of the sheep came and he helped that Ram and showed it everything. Its help was coming down. And I looked to the Lord of the sheep. I looked until that Lord of the sheep came to them angry. All those who saw him ran and they all fell into the shadow in front of him. All the eagles, vultures, ravens, kites gathered together and brought with them all the wild sheep. And they all came together and helped one another in order to dash the horn of the ram into pieces. Then I looked at that man and he wrote the book at the command of the Lord until he opened the book of the destruction of those last 12 shepherds had done. 
and he showed in front of the Lord of the sheep that they had destroyed even more than those before them had. So, I mean, it, it could be the 12 apostles that were with Yeshua, or it could have been that there were 12 leaders in the revolt with Judah of Maccabee. Um, could be either or. Then I looked at, and the Lord of the sheep came to them and took the staff of his anger and struck the earth. Where's that at? Here we go. I saw also that the Lord of the sheep came to them and taking his hand, the scepter of his wrath seized the, seized the earth, which became rent asunder while all the beasts and birds of heaven fell from the sheep and sunk into the earth, which closed over them. I saw too that a large sword was given to the sheep who went forth against, against all the beasts of the field to slay them. But all the beasts and birds of heaven fled away from before their face. And I saw a throne erected in a delectable land. Upon this sat the Lord of the sheep who received all the sealed books. Hmm. which were opened before him. Then the Lord called the first seven white ones and commanded them to bring before him the first of the first stars, which preceded the stars whose form partly resembled that of horses. So now we're getting into a conversation with fallen angels again. Deborah said, sounds like revelation. Yeah, so the Lord called the first seven white ones and commanded them to bring before him the first of the first stars, which preceded the stars whose form partly resembled that of horses. So those were the fallen angels. The first star, which fell down first, and they brought them all before him. So the star that fell first, we know is Lucifer, Satan, and he's the one that convinced a third of the angels to come with him. And it says, and he spoke to the man who wrote in his presence, who was one of the seven white ones saying, take those 70 shepherds to whom I delivered up the sheep and who receiving them killed more of them than I commanded. Behold, I saw them all bound and all standing before him. First came on the trial of the stars, which being judged and found guilty, went to the place of punishment. They thrust them into a place deep and full of flaming fire and full of pillars of fire. Then the 70 shepherds were judged and being found guilty were thrust into the flaming abyss. Hmm. Into the flaming abyss. At that time, likewise, I perceived that one abyss was thus opened in the midst of the earth, which was full of fire. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that sounds like when the um, abyss is opened up in Revelation. And to this were brought the blind sheep, which being judged. So see the blind sheep? See how there's blind sheep on the earth? which being judged and found guilty were all thrust into the abyss of fire on the earth and burnt. The abyss was on the right of that house. And I saw the sheep burning and their bones consuming. And I stood beholding him emerge that ancient house while they brought out its pillars, every plant on it and the ivory unfolding. They brought it out and deposited it in a place on the right side of the earth. So this sounds like, is this the, this is the new Jerusalem. 
I saw, I also saw that the Lord of the sheep produced a new house, great and loftier than the former, which he, which he bounded by the former circle spot. All its pillars were new and its ivory new, as well as more abundant than the former ancient ivory, which he had brought out. And while all the sheep were left in the midst of it, in the beasts of the earth and all the birds of heaven fell down and worshipped them, petitioning them and obeying them in everything. Then those three who were clothed in white and who, holding me by the hand, had before caused me to ascend, while the hand of him who spoke with me raised me up and placed me in the midst of the sheep before the judgment took place. So now, so Enoch has seen the entire history of, of mankind and now he's being shown the great it sh sounds like the great white throne judgment and the sheep were all white with wool long and pure then all who had perished and had been destroyed every beast of the field and every bird of heaven assembled in that house while the lord of the sheep rejoiced with great joy because all were good and had come back again to his dwelling and I saw that they laid down the sword which had been given to the sheep and returned it to his house, sealing it up in the presence of the Lord. And all the sheep which had been enclosed in that house, had it been capable of containing them, and the eyes of all were open, gazing on the good one, which is God. Nor was there one thing among them who did not behold him. I likewise perceived that the house was large, wide, and extremely full. I saw, too, that a white cow was born, whose horns was great, and that all the beasts of the field, all the birds of the heaven, were alarmed at him and entreated him at all times. Then I saw that the nature of all them was changed and that they became white cows. So this is talking about how when he returns, everything is changed. This is the second coming. You know, even the animal kingdom will be changed upon the earth. But it says they all became white cows. And that the first who was in the midst of them spoke when the word became a large beast. A large beast upon the head of which were great and black horns. While the Lord of the sheep rejoiced over them and over all the cows... I lay down in the midst of them. I awoke and saw the whole. This is the vision which I, which I saw laying down and waking. Then I blessed the Lord of righteousness and gave glory to him. Afterwards, I wept abundantly, nor did my tears cease so that I became incapable of enduring it. While I was looking on, they flowed on account of what I saw. For all was come and gone by every individual circumstance respecting the conduct, conduct of mankind was seen by me. In that night I remembered my former dream and therefore wept and was troubled because I had seen that vision. That is, um, that's interesting because I had read the book of Enoch before, but I have a, sometimes, I don't know, sometimes you read something and maybe, I don't know if I skipped over it or I don't remember reading that. I don't remember reading that. And I had read the book of Enoch before, but I don't remember reading that. I don't know if I skipped over it or if I was skipping through. That's why it's important to read all the way through. But I just thought I would share that since I came across it today. Um, I thought it was interesting that it literally showed the comp God's entire plan for mankind and what would happen. Um, so I hope it blessed you. And I hope you, um, I hope you read the other parts of Enoch if you're interested. Um, Enoch got to see, you know, if this is the book of Enoch, he definitely got to see, um, how God created, um, how, how God, um, gave us the times and the seasons and how he established the earth, um, the, it, it, I mean, the book of Enoch does talk a lot about the fallen angels because it's because <clears throat> it's because of those events that 
mankind spiraled down to where we are today. And remember, Yeshua said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man returns. So, um, I think it's important to know what was going on in the days of Noah so we know what it's like when he returns. And we are very much in those, we're very much in those times. We already have, there's already hybrids on this earth. Um, I know that sounds weird, like saying hybrid. Um, that just means a mixture of two things that don't belong together. And that's been going on for a long time, particularly in China. China does a lot of that. Um, yep. Crystal said from beginning to end and Cheryl said, buckle up. Yeah. Buckle up because, um, you know what? It's actually supposed to happen soon. They're supposed to have, this was supposed to happen already, but they were like slowly, they're like making it happen real slow, but they're supposed to have the official, um, the official release of all the documents of all the um, alien UFOs and um, spacecraft and encounters and all of that. And supposedly after that, there's supposed to be the revealing of one of these beings. And I'm pretty sure that's going to happen when it's, you know, when, when the, when the man of lawlessness is revealed. Um... That's probably when that's going to go down. But they're, they're slowly bringing this out so that it's acceptable to everybody. Look at the 2045 plan. Creepy. I think I know what you're talking about. They keep putting the date back to like a later date. But it's very creepy. It's all, it's all very creepy. But we are on the right side of the book. And I believe that God has work for us to do before the very last act of, of history. So, um, it's good to know God. It's really, really good to, to really, 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 really know him. And, um, there's going to be, I mean, if we thought that there was deception going on during the whole pandemic, um, there's going to be way more deception. If you didn't wake up during the pandemic, then um, you're probably either never going to wake up or you're going to wake up at like the very, very, very last minute. And I pray for those people who still um, don't have their eyes open to the truth in the, of God and um, the truth of what's going on around us because, because Satan, Lucifer is so desperate. He is mixing so much, so many lies with truth, trying to deceive people, but ultimately it's still leading them to accepting these fallen angels that are going to, um, either appear or, um, be accepted. Um, so many people believe that they're, that they're here, that they're here to save us and they're here to save us from ourselves and, you know, make us a better planet and save the planet, all that jargon. Sherry said, blind sheep. Yes. Crystal said, guard your heart. Yes, amen. Guard your heart because, I mean, if you really know the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, it does set you free and you should not be deceived. But the deception is going to be so intense and so real that even the elect may be deceived. So yes, guard your heart and guard your mind. Yes, Sherry says, look at the Marvel movies. That's exactly what the Marvel movies do. They try to get you. They're literally trying to get kids to worship fallen angels. Because that's what the Marvel movies are about. They're about hybrids, which are half human, half God. 
or, you know, gods with a small g, the fallen angels. That's what those are. Those are the mighty men of renown. Um, not to mention what they want to do with, you know, technology and mixing man with technology. Uh, everybody's like so happy that, um, that, uh, what's his name? Musk bought Twitter and, you know, it sounds good, but this is the same guy that wants to put a chip in our brain called Neuralink and wants us all to be hooked up to, you know, a computer. Exactly, they're normalizing it. Yeah, they're absolutely normalizing it. They're slow. Look, I always, I always use this analogy. How do you boil a frog? You know, you put them in water and you slowly turn up the temperature so eventually it's boiling and he's dead. Many will follow, but few are chosen. Amen. Few are chosen. We just have to pray that we can still harvest some that have not been harvested yet. I pray that prayer. Maybe not daily, but I do pray it weekly. I pray that those who have not been harvested yet from the harvest, because, you know, Yeshua said the harvest is ready, but few are the workers. So every time you get a chance to plant a seed, kind of after this um, whole pandemic happened, I just really don't. I used to sort of like wait for the right time to say things or Maybe I would, um, you know, wait for the Holy Spirit to prompt me. I don't really do that anymore. I just kind of say things and I'm just, um, I don't want to say I don't care. I just don't care anymore about what somebody thinks to, enough for me to wait for what I consider to be the right time. Now I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. Most of the time I'm just gonna, now I'm just gonna. I'm just going to throw it all out there because the time is so short. You have to plant seeds. Like I used to like, like sprinkle seeds. Now I'm just like, I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I'm blowing them with a blower. I'm blowing seeds everywhere. I just want to blow seeds everywhere, hoping that they'll find good ground and, and sprout. <laughs> Sherry says, I was extremely was mad when I discovered they were teaching my kids Greek mythology or fallen angels in school. Oh, Sherry, yes. Um, public school, um, I don't have kids. And the reason I don't have kids is because I'm absolutely terrified to raise children in this world. I told God, I said, if you, you know, come and, you know, establish your kingdom, I'll have 10 kids. But this is not, this is scary. Like, so public schooling is is terrifying and you absolutely there's a there's a big move of 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 moms taking their kids out of public school putting it either in a private school or they're homeschooling or they know somebody who's homeschooling that's willing to homeschool their kids public school is just poison I'm even questioning some of these private schools but then you might be a little bit better off but it's so scary what these kids are um, being taught. You know, life is hard enough on its own, but these kids have so much deception that they have to get through. Sherry did that. Good for you. Good for you, Sherry. That is wonderful. You have to. It's like, it's like self-preservation. You have to like... Um, I just, I, it baffles me. It, even, even if you put aside all of this scary stuff that they're being taught, um, even the way that they're teaching math, like the whole Common Core thing, I think Florida did away from, with Common Core. Um, just the way that they teach them things, it's, it's just, um, there's much easier ways. They're, they're trying to make things harder, it's, it seems, instead of easier. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's just sad. But um, so this this Shabbat, maybe, maybe, maybe in the evening, I'm actually going to have my mother here this weekend for Mother's Day weekend. Um, 
you know, my, my dad passed last year suddenly, so she's alone and I don't want her to be alone on Mother's Day. And so I'm going to have her over to our house. Um, Deborah said, thank God our kids are out of public schools. Yes, thank God. Um, so I'm going to have my mother over this weekend, so I may be able to do a video. Um, if not, definitely next Tuesday, I am probably going to start the video that's going to be in our Keys to the Garden group. You're going to want to be there for this. This is going to be so beautiful. I think it's going to be really beautiful. Um, in the Keys to the Garden group, um, I hope to do it in the Keys to the Garden group because I've never done a video in a group. And you know how I am with technology. I'm, I'm just not... If someone shows me how to do something technical... I can learn very quickly, but for me to, to try to learn myself is not pretty. So I'm hoping to do the video in the Keys to the Garden group, but it is going to have to do with um, the land and the Bible. And um, I think it's going to really tie in the word with agriculture very beautifully. And I think that you're really going to enjoy it. So if not this Saturday evening, more than likely it's going to be next Tuesday. So I hope to see you next Tuesday. Um, and I'm probably going to be doing a book giveaway on this book that we're going to be discussing in Keys to the, uh, Keys to the Garden. And um, it's really, um, if you're not, a, if you haven't joined Keys to the Garden, I encourage you to do so because um, I'm trying to, I'm really just trying to get people to grow food. Um, I'm trying to get everybody to grow their own food, I'm trying to get everybody to grow their own medicine. Um, I do have a couple of medicinal tinctures that will be available for purchase coming up soon. Actually, um, I think one's on the 15th of this month, one's on the 8th and one's on the 15th of this month. The, um, the white willow bark will be available on the 8th, so in a few more days. And then the um, elderberry echinacea tincture will be ready on the 15th of this month. But other than that, I just want people to grow, start growing some food little by little, more and more, growing your own medicine. And, um, and then I'm probably going to do a book giveaway. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys, um, that's all for today. I hope to see you soon, and God bless you. Take care. Plant as many seeds every day as you possibly can, and I know that the Lord will bless you, and he will rain down showers so that they may be watered, and he will cause them to grow. Amen. Love you guys. Have a wonderful, blessed rest of the day.